Okay, so I think we can start. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoy your uh, lunch. As I can see, some of you that are still eating, drinking, hop soup, <laughs> let's say. Uh, okay, so we are starting with uh, Michał and his presentation. Thank you. Hello. So, how do you enjoy Digital Dragons? <laughs> Yesterday's party was a, a bit too much, so maybe my voice will be shaky. What? Legendary. <laughs> Legendary, yes. Okay, so I will talk about modern VR. Uh, yeah, so VR is for a year on the market, like on a customer market, so it's, it's a pretty like a, a elitish to say that something is modern and uh, so something needs to be classic already. But there are trends that uh, can be recognized already. Uh, so what is classic in VR? So these are mostly those small experiences that you hop in, hop out and, and transform into another place and uh, you spend a little bit of time there, be amazed and then this is like the, the classic stuff, it, it, it works perfectly. Um, also, we can talk about classical f uh, stuff uh, in terms of graphics, audio, and overall design. We can see the, the classic trends in, in graphics, like a cartoonish style or stylized graphics at all. And there are a couple of genres that probably will extinct in time because uh, they are really, really um, dominant right now, like wave shooters. I, I guess they that they will disappear at some point where some problems will be resolved. Uh, but also games that are like touch and interact, it's like point and clicks from, uh, uh, from the 90s. And, and those are the, um, those experiences where you grab the stuff, open the shelves, uh, drawers, uh, like job simulator and so on. So, so they are based on the uh, experiencing something new, like discovering the medium. And there are some like f things that are super funny. So uh, you grab things, you can throw it, throw it, throw it into someone, and you are not punished in. But you will be punished in the future for that. <laughs> I don't know if you ha have heard about the the police in alt space, like the moderators that are standing where people are talking with each other and like swearing or something. There is like a policeman moderator said, "Hey, I, 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 it's, it's too much." shouldn't talk like that. So this kind of moderations are already present and there will be much more of this because in VR there is like a full body experience and, and voice chat, voice chat which is a problem. Okay, and there are movie experiences. Movie experiences that currently it's something like there's a new movie like Hollywood style um, a blockbuster that comes out and it needs to have like a VR experience to it. So like Aliens, uh, new Alien Covenant had this really weird experience. And, and directors really love VR, even if they don't know absolutely how to use it, they love it. Okay, so those experiences show that VR has its own language. And it's like starting to develop, but it's different language for, from all the other mediums. And each medium has this uh, language, and probably books are the hardest one. So you need to learn how to read. And you learn that during the primary school for like a couple of years, just to read wo uh, sentences, and then to like distill the context from the books. It's like another couple of years. So uh, I think that right now I'm 36, uh, I can read books. I mean, I can read for myself, but I can also read for someone. And it took me a while to get to this point. So, so this is the hardest medium. But on, on the other hand, like the movies are really, really easy medium because you, you just like turn it on or go to cinema and watch. It, it's, it's not like that. So movies also have their own language. It's mostly based on the editing. So you know, like there is a dialogue between two persons, then there is a cut on one person, cut on the other person. So there is a language in there, but it's quite, it's like very, very easy to, to learn. And it was developed during the 30 years of the cinema. Uh, after that, there's probably nothing more to be discovered. It just changes ba based on the trends. Um, and also there are games 
which have their own language, and it's something between the books and movies. So um, the, the language of games is dev developed quite a lot, and if you put someone to play a game like your grandmother, then you have a problem. You have a big problem because the analog stick is a nightmare for those people. And also, gaming language is hard for those who quit at some point and try to go back, and they need to develop the new trends. And it's, it's, it's really, really hard language. And VR language is very different from movie language and different from game language, and it's basically simple because it exists for just one year. So, for example, there are 360 videos, which uh, it's, a, it's a new kind of language for cinema, and it, it looks like this that you can um, feel that you are surrounded by the action, but it actually doesn't make too much sense, because when, you, when there's action happening, then you need to follow it, and it takes an effort from you, and it's not fun. And the thing is that when the action comes from a couple of thing, uh, places, then the di director or every one of, uh, of us thinks that this movie can be reviewed a couple of times. And it doesn't work like that. It's, like it's very rare to watch the same movie a couple of times just to see it from different spots and, and different perspectives. And making it obligatory in the medium is not the way to go. And, and also, like the, the 360 movies, let's, let's call it straight, it's not VR. Especially that when they are not 3D and like 90%, 99% of them, is, it's not, not, not 3D. So, VR language is bar uh, barely written. It, it just contains a couple of words. So, we know that we want to cover the senses in VR, so like the sight and hearing is something that we currently address. But also like six degrees of freedom of movement is, is one of those letters that, that needs to be um, like, it needs to be covered. Uh, but the in most interesting letters of VR alphabet is the word interesting and revelation of something that you never experienced before. And those are the letters that are something that I would like to concentrate uh, in, in, this, in this presentation. And also one of the letters is that VR needs to be high quality. Quality in VR, uh, it's something that matters so much. And the new alphabet also doesn't contain the burden of old dialects. I call it old dialects like video games have. For example, like the point-and-click adventures, is an old dialect that that gone extinct at some point, but it's revived but by some people that really like it. So and and there is like a niche of players that catches it. It's something like you would read a book in ancient Greek. And, and you would like enjoy it, and or, like your father will say, it's like this is the stuff that we played when when we were at at your age. But it's actually a burden of the games, the language when we, when it was developing. So I guess that wave shooters will also be like this. And I also say it straight that gamers are probably the worst VR consumers, and non-gamers are perfect VR consumers. It's because Gamers have so much demand on the content. They have like virtual worlds, like so big and vast, like Horizon Zero Dawn. It's like a perfect world with uh, streaming data all the time, uh, good AI, um, story, and so on. It's, it's huge. And right now for VR, we have those small, tiny pieces. Like you would go to the restaurant and take the. Um, the tasting dish. You got this, 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 and it's like great. And there is not too much people that actually understand tasting dishes because they prefer like the big chunk of, of meat. And okay, let's go here. Ah, okay. So uh, for VR, um, entry level to those non uh, VR consumers is is very very low. So. I was talking about those demanding gamers. Think about it when there was only like a text-based games, like maths, signals, like MMOs in, in text, and the graphics came in, and they were saying like, 
those graphics are not, are not necessary. I'm completely immersed in these text words, and this is enough for me. I, I don't need that. So this is how those uh, people, current, current gamers, react to VR. I don't need VR because my words are much more intense, and I have everything in there. I, I don't need more. But um, graphics was something that lowered the entry level for gamers. So when there were just text-based games, there was like a, this pile of gamers. When the graphics appeared, the pile went this big. And I think that VR will make even more bigger pile because the entry level is the lowest. And remember that in VR, something happens like this. Who you see first is your mother. <coughs> And it works like this. If you will see a VR experience that is compelling, great, brings tears in your eyes, then you will remember it as a good VR experience. And then you will compare other stuff to that one. So you need to concentrate on making, uh, on, on like trying to be first. Trying to be first with uh, uh, such ideas. So if you will make a, a game with modern art graphics, then it needs to be good. And then if someone will catch it, then he will compare other stuff to, to, to your game. And, and this can be seen on, on the Reddit pages. If you read uh, Reddit pages, or like VR subreddits, there is like a constant love in there. <laughs> and the, f the f uh, nice thing is that uh, people love each other on, uh, like for example, Vive um, subreddit loves Oculus subreddit and PSVR uh, subreddit, they are sending their gifts like Christmas uh, wishings and so on. But currently they got polarized uh, toward flat screen gamers and flat screen journalists. But I, I will talk about this later. Not now, uh, let's go back to this modern classic discussion. So classic controller needs to be forgotten in VR. So this includes gamepads, move controllers, HTC Vive first controllers. They're really nice as at the start, like when you are feeling them. But they're really bad. I mean, the grips are really bad. They're heavy. Like compared to touch, the touch is like next gen because they have like finger recognition and it's much more. But I guess the final solution is no control at all, at all. Your hands. And this is something that we need to concentrate. I, I know that you, uh, if you are like, there's classic gamers on, on the whole, that you will say it's like we need button. Because you, you re remember like from Geo VR, uh, this kind of, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, but hands are enough. It's like moving around with stuff. It's, it's completely enough if you want to bring um, a nice experience, like an experience of enlightenment in VR. So touch controls are the only way to go. And game pads, like for regular games, the game pads should be sliced in half. Like the uh, PS4 controller, is, it should be sliced in half. All the game pads should be sliced in half because holding a controller like this makes your hands hurt and you want to sit on a couch with your hands like this. And you have like one part here, one part uh, there. And Nintendo just did that. And, and the thing is that Nintendo is the, the most innovative uh, like a company in terms of games. But something, sometimes they do their stuff too early. <laughs> so so the, nun the problem with Nunchuck was that, that it had a cable. And you had to connect this cable all, all, the, uh, all the time when you switch from one game to another. And when they removed the cable and make some games that are like necessary to have those two uh, controllers, then it worked. So it's like brighted. But I think that they were influenced by VR stuff to go into that direction. It's a really good direction. So like for, for uh, a mobile VR, I guess there is like a controller for Daydream. There should be another one, like for the other hand, and and it will be the problem will be solved. So what else is already classic in VR? Let's talk about graphics. Um, one more thing about my presentation: I won't uh, show anything like any kind of graphics there, are any kind of movies, nothing, because you won't understand it. I, I mean, if you, there are VR developers in the hall, there's a chance that they will understand it, but uh, but flat screen is really. The worst case scenario to show VR stuff, that's why I will not, I will concentrate on words 
because like speech and old style text is the best to talk about VR right now. So in terms of graphics, cartoon style should remain as an alternative and not a mainstream of VR, because right now cartoon is mainstream of VR, and uh, <laughs> how long will we stand, stand it? Um, it was fun, it's like, w why this is happening? So this, is, this style is direct implication of Uncanny Valley curve. So in VR, Uncanny Valley applies to everything, Uncanny Valley is a, is a term uh, from robotics, and it means that when you make a robot, and you start from a very basic robot, like an industrial robot or a toy robot, then you accept it, and when you go to a robot that looks nearly as a human, then it starts to lo look really creepy. And it goes the same for graphics. If you put uh, um, like a current game, current gen game into VR, it will look really bad. It will look really bad because it will have uh, bad textures. You will see like a um, bad triangulation of polygons. So you go to the stylized graphics because you don't need too much polygons. You get rid of the textures. But how long we will go with that? So we should try to s make a leap over this uncanny valley um, through the bottom by using defamiliarization. It's, it's also called ostranienie, and uh, it was, it's like an artistic technique of presenting to audiences common things in an unfamiliar or strange way in order to enhance perception of the familiar. Like in poetry, poetry is different than a prose or ordinary speech, to enhance understanding poetry as an art form. On the other hand, if you will spend too much time in VR, then you will start to enjoy the real world. Because the real world doesn't have so many problems. <laughs> um, so, and also doesn't have too much those bugs. <laughs> so you, you really start to enjoy like the weather, the weather changes, the light changes, the, the breeze, and so on. You, you miss that in VR currently. So the interesting is the most important word that we should rely on VR. And good and not good are, no, are those words that shouldn't be used in VR because they are not defined yet. They are very relative. And let's say that interesting is good and weird is bad. So it's like something like weird, but in a bad sense. For people, people living in real world, fantasy is interesting. So, so this is a kind of um, escapees for, for, for them. And think about it on the other side, like if you are spending a lot of time in virtual world, so in this virtual world, interesting will be things that are from the real world. So for example, if you are in a game like an um, MMO and you have like a mechanics of washing dishes, and it says like, wow, that's a detail. Like th so someone spent a, a lot of time on that, and it's, it's really great. And it's like a, some such common thing in 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 uh, in real world. And check this out. This this washing machine even has the pro programs, and you, you can put ingredients in there. It's so amazing. And normally in real world, you just hate this stuff after a while because you do it like constantly. You need to do that. So. Interesting in VR is basically something that does not occur in the real world, but is believable. It's like believable, like you, can, you believe in that. Like triangle rain. Is there like someone on, in the hall that experienced a triangle rain? Like, put your hands up. Nobody. You should try it. It's, you, it's, you should really try it because it's like in the real world, it's really, really hard to do it because you need to cut it like from the paper put it uh, on top of your head and like throw it like with the constant speed and uh, while you could like sh uh, like look at those triangle pieces that they are like completely completely perfect like without any kind of like scissors stuff on them and and so on or being close to performance act artists so so this is something in vr that it's very 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 interesting because normally you are not close to performance art artists. Like there's one exception, it's like the street artist like, gives you the, the biggest opportunity to do that. But normally you sit in a distance. So when you go to the theater, 
can see this ballerina in a distance, so it, it's, it's no different from TV, except that the audio is, is really great. But being close to artists in VR is not enough to activate this Australianism, like the familiarization. So we discovered that when uh, we comp uh, compared Bound to La Peri, uh, they both of them contain ballet dancer, but Bound is much superior experience. And why is that? It's because you control the character. And this is the, 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 the thing that is really interesting, because you can move close to, to, to this ballerina, and you, you control them. It's like you definitely feel that you are not the ballerina, you are there, but you still can control them. And what we did is moved a little bit forward, so we used slow motion on the, on the ballerina. We didn't implement it in the, the final game, but this was much, much interesting. We had problems with the, the blending of animations because they, they looked really funny. For example, like her head turning 30, 60 degrees. <laughs> but making a slow motion ballerina that jumps in front of you and stops in the air, and you could like walk around her, it was really, really interesting. So what else can we do with the graphics to, to get into a modern VR path? So let's, let's try to distinguish like three different visual planes in VR. First is distant plane. So in, in general, all cube map work tricks, uh, cube map tricks from, from 2D games work. So you can have like a distant uh, cube map and it looks okay. You can paint it, it also looks okay. But what we would like to use the distant plane for is the feeling of scale. And this is something that it's really hard to achieve in VR. And the thing also is that we did it in Bound and it works really, really nice. People are writing it all the time that the huge of scale and architecture is uh, it's hard to compare to other VR experiences. And the funny thing is that we tried to do it once more and we failed. And uh, we didn't get the same feeling of height when you are like looking down, and we didn't uh, get this feeling of something really huge in front of you, like a castle. They all just looked flat. So we think that because in Bound we used emotion on everything, that was like giving you a better perception of the, the distances and the height. So, so this is a trick that I, I would sell you to make as much dynamic stuff on the screen as you can. They don't need to be very fast. They just need to be fluent and move. It would be nice. A medium plane. So, so medium plane is the most problematic one, and you will, like player will, uh, or any user will spend most of his time looking at the, the medium plane. It's, it's something like in between uh, one and a half meter till 10 meters. So, this one is is problem because LOD popping is really visible in VR and it's not nice. At some point, at first it's like interesting, but then you, it, it feels feels weird in a bad way, and uh, so it requires most work from the um, uh, from the graphicians. But if you make this plane also dynamic, then it's it's much, uh, much more interesting because static things generally is is not so cool. It looks unreal but in a bad sense. Weird. Okay, and a closed plane. Closed plane is most interesting thing in VR, and I, I will discuss it in more detail. This is the plane that we should concentrate on, uh, because spotting interesting thing in close distance is most interesting in VR, and this Australianie appears mostly in, in this plane. So it needs to have the highest fidelity like, you can get. In order to move away from this cartoonish look, you need to have like spend most of your computational power on the closest plane. And it means like multiple 4K textures on a thing that is 30 centimeters away from you. So you have this like this phone, like maybe not, not phone, like a cube, and it needs to have a 4K texture. And then you start to feel that it's getting, you are getting there with the visual fidelity. So 
the thing that we discovered recently is that the use of texture tiling so uh, uh, on extensively on short distances so that where where we can see the tiles in this room everywhere so look at the uh, look at the uh, walls there are tiles look at this, uh, the 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 floor there are tiles and if you will put those tiles in the video game on a flat screen it will be very boring it will be ps2 style graphics and in reality you just like your eyes concentrate just like on a, you have the sharpness over this distance and over and here is blur you can like move your gaze and you have just like a piece of of sharpness and then it's blur and that's why you are concentrating on just a part of the tile if i look here then i have blur here so so it's, it's, you can get rid, of, uh, rid with the tiling. And the funny thing is that when you experience real tiling, like a perfect tiling in a real world, then it's very, very interesting experience. Like if you would go to the hall that has a perfect tiling on the floor infinitely, like for 100 meters, then it is something that it's ra rarely happens in real world. Okay, so, so what's more in, uh, in terms of this short plane? Signed dis distance function, uh, fields or functions are really interesting in a closed distance. So, so this is something that maybe I should like, put a, uh, like a picture or movie of uh, SDFs. But there are common things like shaders that appear on a shader toy, toy site. If you enter shader toy, like 99% of stuff there is based on uh, uh, SDFs. And uh, if, if you would get this shader toy in your hand and like look around it and how it behaves, it gets really, really interesting because uh, th this technique doesn't use, use triangles. And currently, most VR experiences, experiences are based on triangles, and you will get bored with that really soon. So if you are use some kind of different, different complex geometry, then you will get interesting things. And most in, uh, in, uh, important thing in VR country is to use the reactivity. So reactivity is a term coined by Isaac Kabibo Cohen, I strongly recommend uh, all of you to check his works on uh, on Steam. On, uh, on Steam, they're mostly free. And so, so he was thinking about this. He he had this kind of toy that you you have a stick and a and a, a sphere on top of it, and when he was like putting it on top, then it make this funny noise like tuck tuck. And it was really cool. It was like something nice. So I would extend this to, to describe it easier. You have like the shell on a beach. You find this shell. It's like a huge shell. And you put it into your ear and you hear, hear this like a noise. Like and it's really, really calm and interesting. So this is something that, that we try to find in VR. If you, if, if you have your hands in VR, don't do any collisions with this table. So you go through this table. But if you will normally go through this table, it's boring. It's, it's, it's different. So you need to do some kind of reaction of this table on your hand. So for example, open a hole. Or make it from a, a goo, so it will be like a rubber or something. It's like make a noise. If you put your hand in a, in a table, let's, let's just booze, bzzz, and you will go up. Bzzz, bzzz, and, and then it's, it starts to be reactive. And this is something that it's very, very interesting in VR. As for audio, it's very important. So some people ask if music can be used in VR because you want to be immersed in the world. And I can tell you that it works really well, especially like classic music when put into a places that don't belong there. It's something that I had like ex one experience in my life when I was on a, a on a, like a village house of, of my parents, and one day at like 7 a.m. I woke up. I went to the uh, to the forest and I hear this like children uh, singing like oh, and I was thinking that, like something's like messed up with my brain, 
And then I walked on the on the street and I seen this like people going uh, going to like a pilgrimage, like a Christian pilgrimage, and there was like children singing in, in the forest. So at first it was really really interesting experience. <laughs> it's like maybe I'm in, in I'm already dead or something. I can hear music inside the forest. So so this works exactly the same. You need to invest a lot of time into sound design. It needs to be spatial, obs use abstraction and occlusion. And like if you can, you can pre-compute audio transfer in your spaces because it gets the experience much more interesting. And then let's talk about design. So evoking adrenaline in VR is pretty simple. You just like put someone and try to scare everything <laughs> out of him, and it works. It works perfectly. But the problem is that getting adrenaline out of player in a flat screen universe, it's also quite easy. So if you take, for example, like multiplayer, survival, uh, spikes in difficulty like in, uh, Dark Souls games, uh, challenge, so you will also get this adrenaline. Uh, it's, in VR, it's just easier because you just put someone into this kind of toxic environment and they got immersed very easily. But what you should try to concentrate on is the endorphins instead of the uh, adrenaline, so the, the hormones of the happiness. And they can be stimulated with the, the familiarization or by concentrating on interesting things or by using reactivity. So, so those topics that I've already co covered. So VR is perfect for escapism in experiences that are meditative. Like you can make a Buddha experience in VR and make yourself like a meditative space that you, you can be there alone, but in a good sense, like a place where you can chill. And now, I will talk about locomo locomotion for about five minutes. So for early adapters, the VR hard guys, locomotion is already solved. So um, you just need to implement multiple options, like the teleports for those that get a little bit dizzy, but actually the smooth walking is already there. You can just like move uh, people with the constant speed. You just make a slider of the speed, uh, like based on user preferences, because actually people tend to grow their VR legs. And I also grown mine. I was like one year ago. I was saying that it's like it's not going to work. I'm getting dizzy all the time. But right now, when we are de develop stuff for VR. I use it for like um, debugging or just walking fast through one space to another, and I can do it for like a couple of hours without any problem at all. You just need to g g have like a um, high frame rate and uh, and a constant speed, and uh, you walk into the direction when you look. But there is no way that you will reach to a majority of audience this way, and this is something that um, like super hot guys like. <laughs> They um, they proved it to me. It's like I, I understand. It's like you, you got me. It's you're right. It's it's no way that you will get to to all the people with implemented locomotion. It's like at, at all, because even if you do a, a, this kind of uh, any locomotion, it will get you out from the from the virtual worlds. And video games have created a false view on the virtual world. It, during like the, the last 30 years, they were teaching you stuff that is false. They, uh, and, and we need to like un, 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 unteach that from, from people. So first person um, walking is like, like in a normal game, like running faster than Usain Bolt in VR. It's like super fast. Doors are like gi gigantic. It's like... Uh, it's 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 like a church entrance, and not to mention the furniture, which is like completely out of of the space. When you design a game for VR, then it gets unplayable on flat screens. So when you mo make the doors at actual size, it will be really hard to pass them in in 2D. If you will get, uh, make the the furniture in VR right then it will be super small on flat screens and it will be really hard to get into this interaction point. 
And the implemented locomotion creates a tiny layer that's a border to virtual world. So that's why in order to cover all the population, you have to use natural motion, natural com uh, uh, controllers, um, like hands, and natural interaction. Otherwise, you will not be able to enjoy pictures like this. This is one picture that I put into my presentation. Okay, so, so this is the installation that we did this, uh, this Saturday. It was in a, in a museum, and uh, it's a museum of modern art which contains the neoplastic chamber. It's not visible on the screen, it's like just part of it. But it contains a couple of pieces that are very important for the chamber, and they are currently gone to a transfer to, to Madrid. So we recreated this space and uh, th those paintings and sculptures and uh, invited people because there was like a night of museums, so there was a lot of people, like we, there was like 180 people that used the installation and there was like 100% happiness. So this lady was like almost having tears in her eyes. There are people that are really um, connected with those paintings. There are like ladies that come to this museum like each year, like uh, like to the church, for, <laughs> for example, and see if the picture is there, it's, if it didn't change it. They like to spend time with those art pieces. There is something that I understand. It's like some people like to have this um, art inside their houses, like just for themselves. My, my, my wife always said that she would like to have one piece that she knows that it's unique and there's no, nobody else have it in the world. But museums work like this, like those people can go, go there and, and enjoy it there. So it was mostly their first contact with VR for those people in museum and probably they enjoy the technology, but the, the medium language was like super simple. There was natural motion, natural interaction. The quality of experience was high. We have like a huge PC, like 20 kilos PC. There was good tracking, good image quality. We were, it was believable. They, uh, it, the people like said it's like they are there, they are seeing the pictures. They could go into the pictures, like m move inside the pictures. So we used the Ostranienia and, and the other techniques that I already described. And lastly, the content was what they were expecting. So th there was no um, wave shooter over there <laughs> with zombies. Or there was no, um, was it called uh, uh, the rail train? Uh, roller coaster. There was no roller coaster in there. So there was like a virtual modern art wi within a modern art museum. Nothing that uh, what they couldn't understand. And guess what? Who you see first is your mother. It's, uh, it will work for them because it was a good ex VR experience. Um, but we had this tiny problem. It's like I'm getting uh, out of time, but maybe we'll squeeze something. Um, there was one problem with the installation. We had the flat screen, uh, which was used as the pre preview monitor for us, like to see if everything's going. And some people, were looking at the flat screen and they were saying like, okay, so I know what's happening in there because I seen it on the streams, like it's just that and they were like going away. So there was like a thousand people trying to go to the exposition, but uh, we served like 180 because there was no time and there was no space and, and th that's it. But most of them left unsatisfied because they looked at the flat screen and there is a flat screen problem Okay, so this is uh, what I've already talked about, about the preview monitor. But w with time, the video feed from the headset will be much, much harder to understand and uh, harder to read for people that didn't experience VR. So, for example, what I was telling with the tiling, if they will see this tiling on a flat screen monitor, they will say, it's like, no way, it looks like, I will not say what, like trash and rapid head movement like on those streams. It's something that you can't follow because normally you use like more static cameras, you use cinematic cuts and so on. Ah, yeah, the toilet texture. So in real world repetitive patterns, it's already what I said, but let's go to promotion. So the promotion of VR is really, really painful. Like the trailers are bad. You can make a cinematic trailer for VR and that, that the best thing that you can do is like, make 
uh, imagine, in, imagination of people work. The Sony is doing their stuff right now, good, because they are like making the first thing in each trailer on PSVR games like that they promote is someone that is putting a headset on. So people will understand that they will need this headset to experience that, and that's, that, that's the, uh, the place where we are in terms of communication with people. And mixed reality trailers still not transform you there. They, they describe what you do there. And also, like the, the mixed reality stuff is, um, is actually, it shouldn't be called mixed reality, but it should be called augmented virtuality because you augment virtual space by adding your own body in there. So YouTube and Twitch streams are wor worst of them all. I can't watch it. I can hear that, but you, you can hear these people saying, like, amazing, and you see this flat skin, it's like, what's amazing in there? And you won't, won't understand it until you put the helmet on someone's head. So it seems that we are back on the good old text article standard because the text describes the experience best, as someone will, in a comfort way, describe that this is good, and why, and so on. So I think you just need to deploy free demos, or make the refunding work better. So for example, you, you say that you can refund, refund after 30 minutes, because the overall experience is one hour, so if you are satisfied within 30 minutes, then um, then go on, and if not, then you have like a warning that you will not be able to refund it if you go past through the point. Or create free VR experiences, if you can. Okay, so perfect timing. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's like time left for any questions or just uh, like... Maybe one question if you want. I don't know. Anybody? Okay, so... Hey, hi. What do you think about the idea of transforming uh, theater performances into VR? That's a good idea. Yeah, okay, yeah. thanks. That's a, that's, a, that's a good idea. Short question and also the answer. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thank you.